Hello, my beautiful planty people, and how are you doing today? I hope you're great. I'm doing wonderful. It is a beautiful day here. This is so uncharacteristic for November, but it is like 22 degrees here today. I don't know what that translates to in like Fahrenheit, maybe like, I don't know, 75, 80? It is balmy. <laughs> this is so weird, but you know what? I'll take it. I will absolutely take it. Anyway, so it's been a beautiful day. It's sunny outside, it's warm. We have the windows and doors open, which in November in Ontario, Canada, doesn't happen. Anyway, you're not here for a weather report. Plus I don't have one of those little fancy like, today, you know what I mean? Excuse me. Okay, anyway, so <laughs> for those of you who are new here, hi, hello, welcome. My name is Nikki, this is my channel plants, pots, and whatnots, and for all of my wonderful, lovely gluttons for punishment who keep coming back for more, thank you so much. It is amazing to see you as always. So, um, you guys said that you would actually, uh, in the last video, I said let me know if you want to see me pot up some of my propagations, sorry, second last video, and um, I need to do it, so we're going to film that today. And uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing. And I figured while I'm doing that, I will go back and answer some of the questions that I missed um, in the previous Q&A because there was a lot of them and a lot of them I couldn't get to, I just didn't have time. So I figured this would be a great opportunity to get to those questions that I missed. I also have something really cool to show you that I'll show you here in a second. So yeah, if you wanna stay around and watch that, then please stick around and watch. I have to put my hair up because it's getting hot in here. Does anybody else automatically sing that song whenever anybody says it's getting hot in here? I know you do. I know you do. You're all going, so thank you for your clothes. I know you are. Okay, anyway. So here's the cool thing that I want to show you first and I want to get this done today. Um, so I thought I would just do it on camera with you guys, but this is something like super, super neat. Uh, you don't see this very often. Um, I shared it on my Instagram, but I know that my Instagram followers and my subscribers on YouTube are a little bit different. Um, so I thought I would show you guys this here, but this is like the coolest thing. So let me just drop things on the floor. So this, <laughs> you can't see. Hold on. Let's see if I can tilt you. I'll just hold it on my lap. There we go. Okay, so this is my Philodendron Glorious. Now, if you've been with me for a bit, you saw me chop this guy up. I think I cried a little. For sure I cried a little. Um, this plant was about five feet tall and it was growing like a weed and it was toppling over um, off of the moss pole and it was time. It was time that I cut her. So I cut her down to right here if you can see this. Um, and then this is the whole new piece that she has grown since then. There's one, two, three, four, five, technically five leaves. I'll explain the technically in a second. Um, and so it's it's done really really well so the cool part about this plant is that it gave me a double leaf now if you can see this leaf right here if we look behind it there's another leaf so I'm gonna try to show you guys this the best way I can um, so if you look from the side you can see that the two leaves grew from the same petiole Try to get a shot from the back here without snapping the whole thing right off. I'll zoom in if I have to. So right here, you can kind of see that the petiole widens at the top and then splits in two. If it's hard to see, I'll insert footage, but I think you kind of get the idea, right? Um, 
anyways so that was the after I cut it that was the third leaf to come in um, was this double leaf now I think only one other time now this isn't to say that it never happens I'm sure it happens it's just an anomaly it's a freak thing that you know it's just one of those things that happen um, I think I've only seen somebody post anything like this about one other time and I can't recall the plant that it was on to be honest um, anyway but I really wanted to show you guys this because I thought it was just so so cool um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do today because it needs to be done I'm gonna cut this part off um, and I'm gonna propagate this part now because this has been in my Mars Hydro grow tent it has some really nice aerial roots um, and this plant I find roots really easily anyways so I shouldn't have a problem with it so I'm gonna cut this top part off and I'm definitely keeping this part because that's just so unique and so cool and then I'm gonna cut um, in, it into two other nodes as well and go ahead and propagate and grow two new plants from those. Um, all of the original baby glorious plants I have um, you know, given away to friends or traded and uh, they are all doing wonderfully well. <laughs> so um, we need to get some new glorious babies. So that's the first thing we're gonna do today is go ahead and cut this and get him uh, rooting and then I have one, two, three, four, five, maybe six um, plants that I just have to toss in soil, which won't take me very long at all. So that was quite the opening, but I had to show you this. Anyway, let me get him back over here. Ooh. Boink. There you go. Now I'm messy story of my life I'm all right uh, plant people problems okay um, so I'm just gonna answer some questions while I do this you guys have seen me propagate plants like this like 150 million one times um, so it's it's not exciting by any means um, so yeah I'm just gonna do that so I'm trying to remember which questions I answered last time and which ones I did not uh, so let's start with something easy oh this is not actually it's not easy current favorite plant do you know how difficult of a question that is? We're gonna cut this. Let me see. I don't know if you can see. So this is where we're gonna cut it. So here's the node for the double leaf and then this new leaf here. And then let's get this weird. Oh god, it just it's all gelatinous. It's gelatinous. Oh, oh god, that's that's gelatinous. PS gelatinous is my favorite word. Do you have a favorite word? Is it weird? I just, gelatinous is fun to say. Anyway, so, um, and then the next note here has some pretty crazy aerial roots on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it right there. So there is the first one, there is that double leaf. Now I can kind of show you a little better what that looks like. So you see it, it widens right here, the petiole, and then it splits off into two. So there is leaf one and there is leaf two. And then there is the new leaf that's coming out. Isn't that funky? It's funky. Okay, uh, and then we'll go ahead and cut the next one. Anyway, I don't know what my favorite... Oh, there's no leaf on that node. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so I guess we're just gonna have to make cuts then. Okay, so there is number two. Oh, there is, but I couldn't have got it, I don't think. It just wouldn't have worked. Okay, that'll do. That'll be fine. All right, uh, and then we will put this back in my greenhouse, or my grow tent, I mean, and uh, she can just continue to grow. I don't have any place for this. Hold on. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and this is actually a question that I get asked, um, not all the time, but I have been asked it quite a few times. Um, and that is, do I reuse my spag moss? And I absolutely 100% do. The only time that I won't reuse my spag moss is if, number one, I swear to God that only happens when I'm filming. You're still tipped up really high. Hold on. Get down here. No, hi, oh goodness. It's a little better. Um, so the only time I won't reuse sphagnum moss is when I have had some sort of pest issue, uh, which doesn't happen overly often um, in my propagations and stuff. 
um, or if the spang moss is just really old um, at one at some point and I've had this a couple times where I've just had a plant in spag moss for so long that it kind of starts to go a little dry and then it has a hard time like re-wetting it's almost like it just breaks down and doesn't want to re-wet anymore um, so I definitely do reuse my sphagnum moss and there's no reason why you shouldn't why bother throwing it out waste not want not there's nothing wrong with it it's perfectly fine um, so I encourage you to do that instead of wasting it and throwing it out uh, saves you money also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these potted in the soil first and then I can use the spag moss from those plants to pot these in it's a cycle it's a cycle of life anyway um, I'm going to go ahead and reposition the camera and we will get to potting some of these plants and I'll show you what some of them are because they're super cool. Okay, so first I'm going to go ahead and oh, move my pots here. Um, I wasn't really sure what size I'd need so I just grabbed a bunch. Uh, so I'll show you what plants I'm going to go ahead and pot up today and um, then we'll just like do it and then answer some more questions. Okay, so the first one is this guy so this guy rooted so well and it's growing a new leaf that's got some nice fenestrations in oh <laughs> hold in front of the camera dumb it um so this is my monstera esculetto or monstera epipremnoides whichever you prefer um that i got from a friend of mine and i'm super excited this guy has done so so well i'm excited to get him into soil um, after I pot them into soil like I normally do, I will put them back into the greenhouse for a little while just so that there's not a whole lot of changes all at the same time. So I don't want to put them in soil and take them out of the humidity, uh, the high humidity. It's just too many shocks at once. So I'll go ahead and put them in soil and then he goes back in the greenhouse for a few weeks and then I will introduce him to the rest of my collection. So that is the first one. Let's just do one at a time. Let's just, let's deal with one thing at a time because God knows multitasking. Okay, so somebody asked me, knowing that I have both, um, if I prefer my greenhouse or my grow tent. So really it depends on for what. So my greenhouse is great because it has, um, it keeps the humidity in. Um, obviously I can have the lights on each shelf and it's it's better for smaller plants um, whereas my I cannot multitask who am I kidding <sighs> um, whereas the the grow tent is better for like larger plants um, and extreme humidity uh, it's good for um, you can have like one overhead light and because it's kind of, ref it's well, it's not kind of, it is reflective. Um, you can have the, um, the light kind of hitting it from all sides, which is really nice. So I like that feature of the grow tent, but it honestly just depends on kind of what you're looking for. If you have a lot of small plants, um, then just like a little greenhouse would be fine the thing i like about having both of them is that they naturally uh, create their own humidity so you don't need to put any kind of humidifier in your grow tent um, so in the basement um, my mars hydro grow tent that doesn't have a humidifier in it and that grow tent stays around 90 to 98 percent humidity all the time until I open it of course um, and there's no supplemental there's no jar of water or container of water in there or anything like that um, there I mean gr greenhouses and grow tents are designed to keep the humidity in so when you think about especially like after watering you'll probably notice a little spike in the humidity because plants transpire as we know and with the <laughs> I suck at multitasking especially this I'm trying to concentrate on not breaking roots and I'm having a difficult time telling you guys what I want to tell you um, but I'm trying <laughs> anywho what is that smell I think like some neighbors are smoking pot or something um, anywho so I don't know I don't even know oh humidity so once you 
when you water your plants in the greenhouse, you'll notice a spike in the humidity because of plants transpiring when they get take water in or when the soil is moist, that will create more moisture in the air, which just adds to the, the ambient moisture in the tent or the greenhouse. Um, once you start putting humidifiers and stuff like that into your uh, greenhouse, then you start running into problems with mold um, and stuff. And most humidifiers were not designed to be in an enclosed high humidity space. Um, so you can run into some electronic problems and stuff like that. And I just, no thanks. Okay, look at the roots on that. They look great. Amazing. Love this plant so much. That's a lot of root. Wow. All right, we will plunk her down in there. I guess I gotta bring my soil back, eh? Oh. Um, so anyway, the moral of the story is, oh gosh, it really depends on what you need it for. If you just have a bunch of small plants that you're, um, you're just trying to bump the humidity up high, then a greenhouse is fine. Um, if you have larger plants and you're propagating like a lot, I would go with the grow tent for sure. Um, now you can get like shelves, like I have shelves. I gotta do an update for you guys on my grow tent situation because it's getting pretty exciting in there. Some cool things have happened in there and I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about it. Um, it's just more of an intense, light and and greenhouse type situation in a grow tent so it really just is up to you okay i'm hoping that was helpful if i answer something like half-assed it's probably because i i just because i'm clearly not capable of telling you what i need to tell you and potting plants clearly should just shut up okay so there's number one, my Monstera Esculento looking so cute. All right. So there is all the moss from that plant. So that will do one of those cuttings already. Um, so somebody asked me what my, the easiest plant to grow. Um, I mean, I have a lot of easy plants. I could do a video on like my top five or 10 easiest uncommon plants. Let me know if you wanna see that. Um, but if I had to pick just one, I would have to say it's my Syngonium Chia Pence. That thing grows so incredibly fast. It just is happy all the time. It dries out, it's fine. It's just, I don't know. Honestly, that plant is like, Amaze balls. Okay, anyway, but let me know if you want me to do a video on that because I can definitely do that. So the next plant that I'm going to repot is the second one that I got from my friend Cami, and this is the Anthurium balawenum. I always butcher that. It might be close to right. Um, so when I got it, it had this cute little leaf right here. And since then it has grown this one. And then most recently, this one adorable um, so she's doing well now and I'm going to check her roots I'm not a hundred percent sure I think her roots are okay to pot so let's go ahead and pop her out of here and check Ooh, and right off the hop those are not roots thank God um, right off the hop I can see all these roots over here you can see them There's a good size one over here. Okay, so we're good to go. So I'll get her a little pot that I'm going to put her in. So let me ask you guys, which video would you like to see next? Would you like to see a video on the different soils that I make for each of my different types of plants? Or 
would you like to see like part one of my philodendron collection? I really think I'm gonna have to split that video in half because otherwise it's just going to be too long. Um, or I could do part one of my philo collection, then I could do the soil and then I could do part two, perhaps? Go down in the comments, let me know. Okay, so let's get her just unwrapped here. Uh, yeah, question, right? Um, advice on dealing with root rot. Um, honestly, root rot isn't necessarily a death sentence. It's obviously not an ideal situation, but if you catch it in time, if you watch for the signs and you catch it in time, um, you can save your plant. Um, now I get a lot of questions. People will send me photos of leaves and stuff like that and say like, you know, Hey, do you know what's wrong with this plant? And one of the questions that I ask a lot, depending on what the picture looks like, is have you checked the roots? And in some of those cases, it has been a problem with roots. Sorry about that. The kittles came home from school. Anyway, so we got all of the moss off here. Um, anyways, we're talking about root rot. So, with root rot, the best thing that in my experience to do is immediately get it out of whatever media it's in and cut off all of as much of the, the dead roots as you can just so it doesn't kind of spread. Now some people like to leave them on because they feel like they still provide the plant a little bit of nutrient. Um, I don't myself but everybody does things differently. Um, but I will cut off all of the, the roots that are not good anymore. Um, if there are some roots that are good, that's great. Um, if not, what I'll do after that, get all the old roots off. I will put it in sphagnum moss in um, extremely high humidity. So I'll normally put it, I'll do my spag bag method. So I put the, the moss in the, the plant in the moss in the pot and then put the whole thing in a Ziploc bag just blow some air in it um, and that extra high humidity helps to root the plant even more quickly than it normally would so um, that's what I would do and that's what I have done for root rot and uh, so far so good I haven't had a problem with it I have saved all the plants that I have brought back from root rot so um, but again, everybody has their different ways of doing things and you know, there's not one way in particular that it can be done. So that's just the way I do it. Okay. So there is that guy. Look how cutesy he is. Adorable. All right. The next one, I'm excited that we're finally potting it up because it took forever for the roots to grow on this plant. But this one is, um, you got a little bit close to the new grow light. Oops, that's okay. It's on one of the oldest leaves and um, these two took a little bit of a beating too, but his new leaf is good and his second newest leaf is good. He'll get better and his roots are great. So. This is a plant that I got from Lucia at Lulu's Leaves. So we did a little swap. I gave her Philodendron Glorious and an Albo Syngonium. And she gave me this guy and then the one that you're gonna see next. So this is a Philodendron Snowdrift. Uh, when she gave it to me, I believe it had three leaves. Yeah, I think it had three leaves. Um, and these two are the ones that have come out in my care. So there is one, you can see it's got some nice variegation on the side here. And then this is the newest leaf. So they come out this beautiful white with this like green speckling and the stems on them are this gorgeous peachy pink. Really, really pretty. Uh, here's a picture of what they look like when they're mature and they are just a stunning, stunning plant. So um, when she asked me if I had one of these and asked me if I wanted it, I said, oh my goodness, yes, please. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with this guy. And I'm really excited that she's finally got some awesome roots and we can go ahead and put her in a pot. Um, now, this pot should be okay for now. Let's go ahead and put some soil in here. Ooh. 
got some big chunks in there. Okay, that's probably good for now. Okay, let's move on to another question. Um, how low on your moisture meter do you let your um, Alocasia fried egg get? Um, so Alocasias generally like to be kept moist but not wet. So I have, truthfully, I water all my plants when they get to a three on my moisture meter across the board. I've never had a problem doing that. Um, and all of my plants seem to respond really well to that. I mean, there are the exceptions, etc. Like my peace lily, I just have to water that constantly. I don't even bother to check anymore. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I just watered her two days ago and she's like droopy again. Uh, wow, this guy has some amazing roots. It's so funny because I swear I checked this like a month ago and it had like no roots. And it was like one day it just went, okay, I'm ready. And now I'm gonna have an interesting time trying to <laughs> unwrap them all. Um, anyway, so I water my plants across the board with uh, when it is shows up as a three on my moisture meter which seems to be a sweet spot. Like all of my plants respond really well to that. Give it a shot. Um, you can probably let them get a little drier. I've, I've let mine get to like a two before I've watered it and she doesn't freak out too much. So yeah, that's that question. What else we got here? How many Monstera plants do you have and do you sell cuttings? Um, how many Monstera do I have? I have my Thai Constellation. I have my Albo. I have my Dabaya. Um, I have a Peru. I have um, Penny Partita. What else do I have? Is that it? Oh, the I have a couple of Deliciosa, Adansonii. My brain's falling out. <laughs> um, and sometimes I'll I'll sell cuttings, but usually like if if the plant has gotten too big, I'll have to cut it off. I don't like sell plants for a living. Like I don't have a shop or anything like that. Sometimes if I you know, grow some extras, or if I have to cut something down, I'll, you know, grow some and just put them on like Facebook marketplace or garage sale or something like that. Um, so yeah, every now and then I'll, I'll sell something, but it's not like, it's not like a business or anything. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> How do you organize your plant care? Do you use an app or a journal? Do you water or take care of them by sections, etc.? Um, I tried to use one of those, um, apps that you can kind of like put all of your plants in it. And I don't know if I, I think I might've told you this in the last one, but then deleted it. Can't remember. Cause that video was like super long. Um, as I'm sure this one will be, man, there's some roots. This is crazy. Um, so I downloaded this one app. I can't remember what it's called for life me now. And so what you have to do is you have to enter all your, it's, I mean, the, the premise is amazing. So you enter all of your plants into this app and then it has a spot for like when it's fertilized, when it's watered. So you kind of have everything right at your fingertips. And you know, if you can't remember when you last watered a particular plant, um, you can just kind of refer to the app and it will tell you when it was last watered and stuff like that. Now th the catch is obviously that you need to enter all of the information into said app. And if, if you have a, like a, a si like a decent size collection, you know, like a normal person size collection, then that would be amazing. And it was a really, really good app. I'll see if I can remember what it was called. Um, if, if you've seen it down at the bottom here that I remembered. And I could find it. This is crazy. Um, but anyways, so if you have a smaller collection, that's fine. But with 250, 270 houseplants, it's just too much. I, it would literally take me 
two days just to enter all of the plants into the app. Um, and then I would have to enter, you know, the last watering date, the last fertilization date, so that all of that information was um, readily available in there when I needed it. It was just like a lot and I, I spent about two hours doing a couple plants and I was like, yes, I'm done. So, um, but that is a great option. Um, basically I just start, I have one side that I start on and like when I'm watering and I just make my way around the room. I don't, I don't have a schedule. Um, I don't really believe in schedules. I feel like when the plant needs water, you water it. When the plant needs fertilizer, you fertilize it. Um, again, I know I've said this before, but like we have brought these living things into our home. They're not on a schedule they will need it when they need it you know what I mean so I just uh, you know I go around usually once a week and I just check everything and work my way around the whole entire space maybe I'll do like a water with me video is that something you guys have watched I don't know there's <laughs> I've asked you guys that before like oh is that something you'd watch and you know some people are like oh, I'd watch anything Mickey but would you <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to just walk around watering plants? I don't know. Um, okay, what other questions do we have now? So somebody asked, who is your favorite plant tuber? That is like the most difficult question to ask. I watch a lot of um, plant tube. And, you know, I support everybody. I support all of, um, you know, the other creators everybody the thing i love about youtube and all of the different channels and there's so many new channels coming up that i'm not even totally up to date with who is out now um with me posting videos three times a week now my uh free time is basically gone uh, <laughs> so but i know there's so many out there but anyway what i was saying is with with all the different channels out there everybody has their own unique style um, specific things that they are are good at and that they are interested in so every channel is so different um, and it it would be impossible for me to pick who and I know it's one of those questions that all of us get and I think it's a very awkward question for us to answer because we don't want to single anybody out we also you know we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings either um, but honestly, I do watch everybody's video. Um, holy Lord, that is some serious rootage. I think I got like the most I can get without causing a whole lot of root damage. So I'm just going to go ahead and call it done. We'll put her in this cute little pot here. Now she will probably need to be um, up potted in the spring, but that's totally fine. I don't want to jump up the pot too, too much when I'm first potting them. It just gives them a little, a little bit of a shock. I mean, it's already going to be a shock enough to be in soil. So look at the mess here. Oh gosh. Okay, next question. Uh, how do you deal with having so many plants? Um, I actually did a video about that, how I, how I managed to take care of like a huge plant collection. Um, so if you want to go watch that video, I'll try to remember to link it up here. I think it's up here. <laughs> It's just a matter of being organized and finding out what works for you. Like everybody's situation is different. Uh, everybody's time that they can in, in put into their plants is different. And uh, so it's just, it's, and I think that's the one important thing to remember, especially when you're first getting into the house plant um, collector's psychosis. Um, is to your first inclination 
is just to buy all of the plants. But you cannot just buy all of the plants. Well, you can, but it's not smart. <laughs> it's not wise. And I really wish that I had of taken that advice back when I started going absolutely insane a year and a half ago buying plants because you don't have the time to learn about the different plants, learn about your lighting, learn about your humidity. And I really did a lot of things that I shouldn't have done back then. Maybe I should do a video on that. All of my oopsies. <laughs> um, anyway, so really it is best and it requires uh, a large amount of sub um, self control that I don't have <laughs> just to buy one or two plants take a couple months get to know those plants um, get to learn the lighting in your home and all that kind of stuff before you go out and buy 200 plants and then you have 200 plants that you don't really know anything about and half of them are dying and it's like a thing right anyway so what was the question? Uh, oh, how do you deal with having so many plants? Anyway, it all depends on how how much time you have to, to give to your plants. Um, I really, really enjoy plant care and taking care of my plants. And especially now that I am home full time, it is, uh, it's definitely easier to keep up with the plant care because I'm home, but then I have bumped up my YouTube schedule as well. So I don't know. Anyway, you find time for the things that you love, I guess. But there's a lot of tips and tricks and stuff like that along the way that I have learned that help immensely. And those are in that video, wherever I put that. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Oh, did you see her? Look how cute she looks. She's beautiful. I just wish I hadn't screwed up those leaves. Oops. Okay. So I think I'm just going to do this last plant because I still have like a couple others that I was going to do, but this video is already getting a little long because you know, me. Um, anyway, so we'll do this one. So this is, um, a philodendron rugosum. So there are two different, Oh, service with a smile. Thanks, honey. Cheers. Oh, and P.S. Cheers to all of you guys who said that you love eggnog. You're my people. Not that you're not all my people. I just, you're the people that understand that I like eggnog and also like eggnog. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm just going to drink my eggnog. There's two kinds of people in this world. Those who love eggnog and those you can't trust. <laughs> Okay. Ah, oh, it's delicious. Anyway, so there's two, and this is something that I just learned, I don't know, six or eight months ago maybe. So there's two kinds of philodendron rugosum. So there is these ones that have that very textured, um, it's a very thick leaf. It almost feels like textured rubber. And then there is this rugosum, and they have two different, it's like rugosum, Oh, I can't remember the the names. I'll put them on the screen anyway. So this is a Rugosum. And then this one is the Rugosum. Okay. Anyway, so these ones are cool. So they get these really big uh, rubbery heart-shaped leaves with this beautiful texture. They just feel really cool. Um, so this was the other one that I got in the plant trade from Lucia. And um, I'm pretty sure that his roots are also ready to go. Let's pop him out of here. And just give him a check. Ow, there was something pokey in there. Okay, well, it's got roots because it's sticking here, but. Okay, there's a root. That's a good long one. I always say like when you're doing this, just be really careful. Um, roots and sphagmos 
look very similar. So you just want to be really gentle. So I usually literally just grab one piece at a time. If it resists too much, I just move on to a different piece because you definitely don't, uh, especially when you're just rooting a plant like this, it's like newly rooted. Um, you don't want to go ripping off the few roots that it actually has. So um, just be gentle, take your time, do it when you're not in a rush. Looks like it's got one like big long one here. Uh oh, I heard something snap. It could be the moss. Let's hope it's the moss. Oh, please be moss. Okay, sorry, uh, question. Uh, okay, this is one I can just ramble about. Oh, I think that's our dinner. Pizza night. That's exciting. We get this new pizza from Pizza Hut and it's butter chicken pizza and oh my gosh, it is so good. I was like a little iffy about it when I first saw it and I love Indian food. I love butter chicken and curry and all those delicious tandoori, all those great flavors. Um, but I was like on a pizza? And then we ordered it and it was delicious. So if you ever get a chance to try butter chicken pizza, do it. You won't be disappointed. Okay, it's not a crazy huge root, but I think it's big enough that I can go ahead and put it in some soil and it should be fine. So I will go ahead and get this put into soil and then um, I'm gonna go eat dinner because I'm hungry. Okay, um, I think that I'm going to put it in this smaller one just because the root's not crazy big. There we go. Jordan's so funny. He's, he's a talker. He loves meeting new people. He's made friends with all the neighbors. Um, but every time anybody delivers anything, like, and they actually come to the door, he, like, chats with them, and he finds out all these cool things about these people. It's so funny. I'm gonna end up with soil in my eggnog, you watch. That would be awesome. Oh, they're talking about tattoos. Did you know that I have tattoos? Bonus points if you can name one of my tattoos. It's not very often that you see it. So, good luck. Okay, there she is, all cute. So then I can use all of this moss to go ahead and put my glorious cuttings in and throw them in my greenhouse and then we're all done and we're good to go. I won't show you that because you guys have seen me do that a million times. So, oh boy, oh gosh, okay, well, thank you guys so much for watching this little weird videos a little bit all over the place today um, but I was able to get some more questions answered I think so that's good it's talking very loud now you can probably hear that can't you anyways if you have managed to make it this far uh, what emoji are we going to use today? I find this so fun and thank you guys all so much. Um, I've seen a lot more of you than I normally see and uh, like I said in the last video, it's, it's so easy for people who don't comment as much just to throw an emoji and it's nice to see you guys. So it's, it's amazing. I'm having so much fun with this. So what do we want to do today? Let's put that little, um, that little plant, you know how there's like a little, it's like two little leaves, it's like a sprout. 
let's put that because these are newly little you know sprouted propagations so go ahead and put that little sprout guy um, if you don't do the emoji thing you can just write like sprout just so I know that you guys have made it this far okay I will go ahead and wrap it up thank you guys so much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing if you haven't subscribed already please consider doing so it is a huge help to my channel and I really do appreciate it also I would like every single one of you to have an amazing and wonderful day, night, week, month, and year. I love you all to bitty bits, and I will see you in the next video. Mwah!